Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids, and in today's video, I want to primarily talk to you about the Apple Watch and the rip off prices, absolutely ridiculous prices they are charging for the bracelets or straps, especially on the solid gold edition version of the Apple Watch. Before I talk about the Apple Watch, I want to talk to you a little bit about the new MacBook. I did a video yesterday, straight after the event that Apple held to launch the new devices, and I got a lot of questions and comments to ask me to sort of further expand on my thoughts about the new MacBook. So I want to briefly talk about uh, sort of my opinion a little bit more in depth on the new MacBook. Now, when I first saw this, and I'm sure this happens to a lot of people, you see a new product and you think, wow. Just look at the design, it's super thin, uh, retina display, and you sort of overlook some of the actual more important things. And with the new MacBook, what I overlooked yesterday was the real performance and specifications. Now obviously it's a super thin MacBook, you can see on your screen here, 13.1 millimeters uh, thin, and that's at its thickest point, 0.9 kilograms, and 12 inches, so it's got a 12 inch retina display, so really high resolution display. Now, that is really good, that's really appealing, because you're thinking, wow, it's ultra portable. It's also got lots of other new features as well. The keyboard's been improved. It's available in three different colors, silver, gold, and space gray. Uh, the keyboard looks amazing. So these are all the things that when I was hearing the announcement, I'm thinking, yes, this is a superb upgrade and the screen as well, retina display. Now I'm using to read my notes at the moment, excuse me, itchy nose. I'm uh, actually using a retina display MacBook Pro at the moment, and the screen's amazing on this, so I've got no doubt that the screen on the new MacBook will be equally as good. So all of these things really do make you think, yes, this is gonna be a, a really good upgrade. And then you look at the specifications. Now I've got specifications up here, and you've got two main options in the three different colours. You have got one that comes in at £1,049 in the UK. That has 256 gigabytes of storage, 8 gigabytes of memory, and Intel HD Graphics 5300. And then the processor. This is the, the real sort of sticking point with me that I didn't consider yesterday, and it's a 1.1 gigahertz dual core Intel Core M processor with turbo boost up to 2.4 gigahertz. Now it'll perform okay, but it's nowhere near as good as the current generation of MacBook Airs. You know, that's, that's a real step down in performance. And they've had to do something somewhere to save space. This is an ultra thin laptop and, and models that run Windows do this as well. They use really low power processors uh, so they don't generate too much heat. This is how Apple did the fanless design on the new MacBook as well. Uh, and they had to compromise somewhere. They had to use components that were both compact to get that sort of motherboard down in size and also that didn't generate a lot of heat and weren't sort of power hungry. Now the next step up, so sort of the top end model of the new MacBook, gives you double the amount of storage at 512 gigabytes and a slight bump in processor speed, 1.2 gigahertz, so hardly any difference. Dual core again, Intel Core M, and that's costing you 250 pound more at 1299 pounds. And when I've read these back, I'm thinking of two things to really tell people. First thing, is that the MacBook Air is a much better performer. The second thing I would say about this and what it sort of made me think last night was what they've done here is they've sort of strapped like a, a Retina iPad Air, like a larger iPad Air, maybe the iPad Air Pro, and put it onto a keyboard, sort of fixed it so you can't remove the keyboard, and you've got this new MacBook, you know, a very low power Ultrabook. What I think they would have been better doing is launching an iPad Pro or an iPad Air Pro and giving us some sort of docking solution much like the Microsoft Surface Pro 3 so that you've got the tablet solution, you've got the keyboard, you can put them together, have the best of both worlds, instead of which we've got an Ultrabook which is quite a low power Ultrabook. 
Anyway, enough talking about the new MacBook. I said I was gonna briefly talk about that, but really I wanna to talk to you about the uh, Apple Watch Edition. I wanna start off with this model because this is the model I am not going to purchase. Now, I love my watches. I'll just let you know straight away, I am well informed on timepieces. I love my traditional watches. I wear a Rolex Explorer at the moment. Um, I've got other high-end timepieces as well. And you can pay a lot of money for what I would call a traditional uh, horological timepiece. So a traditional timepiece with an uh, automatic movement, an analog face, maybe some different complications on it. Not a smart watch by any means, and you can pay a lot for a really nice watch. With something like a Rolex, or a Patek Philippe, or some other manufacturer watches, you can purchase one, and it might go up in price, it might lose a little bit of price over time. Using this as an example, okay, this is a Rolex Explorer. These come in at round about sort of 4,200 pounds. If you buy one that's five years old, it's probably only gone down about four or five hundred pounds if it's in good condition. So it hardly loses any sort of value over the years. And some models become very rare and go up in price. That's not gonna happen with the Apple Watch. Now, there will still be people that buy the Apple Watch edition, definitely. But I wanna just run over some of the prices and then show you something that's so ridiculous, which is the price of the watch straps or bracelets. So, Apple Watch Edition starts at £8,000, and that's for the 38mm 18 karat rose gold case, as you can see on your screen here, and that has the white sport band, so a gold watch with a rubberized sport band. Bit of a mismatch, can't understand why they did that. If you want to go up to the 42mm version, then you're gonna pay 9,500 pounds. Wow, 9,500 for that one. And then we've got some yellow gold options here. Again, 38 millimeter, 8,000 pound, 42 millimeter, 9,500. This is where things start to get even more expensive. 38 millimeter rose gold with a leather strap and rose gold buckle. This is coming in 13,500. Then we've got other options as well, 42 mm 18 karat yellow gold, 12,000, and the range tops out really at that 13,500 pound price point. What I wanna show you, and unless I'm missing something, I might be missing something, and correct me if I'm wrong, what you're seeing on your screen now is the 42 mm 18 karat yellow gold version with a black sport band. So this is a rubberized sport band and it's coming in at, where's the price, just down here in the corner, 9,500 pounds, 9,500. Now this next one is the same watch, so it's a 42 millimeter, 18 karat yellow gold, so let me just flick back to the other one, so 42 millimeter, so both the same cases, both the same case size, and this has got a leather strap with a gold buckle, 12, thousand pounds so just for switching up the buckle you are paying if my maths is good and yes i have got gcse maths got that when i was 40 two thousand five hundred pounds two thousand five hundred pounds to change the strap from a rubber one to a leather one with a gold buckle it doesn't even say leather on here I'm assuming that it is leather. Let me just double check. Do, 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 do. It doesn't even really sell the strap. Where's the strap? Da, 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 da. So it doesn't give the specifications of the strap. I can only assume by looking at this that this is a leather strap and it's costing you 2,500 pounds just to change that strap. I'll show you that once more. 9,500 for this one with the rubber strap, same watch, leather strap, 12,000 pounds. Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Apple are bonkers on this one, you know. I love Apple products, don't get me wrong. You know that I have the Apple MacBook Pro. You know that I edit my videos on the Mac Pro. I've got an iPad Air, I've got an iPhone 6. 
I've, I just love Apple products. I live within the Apple ecosystem, but this is just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, moving on, we've got two other versions. We've got the watch, Apple Watch Sport, uh, which has got 10 models in it. This is the entry level. This is what you're gonna be going into if you're buying at the cheapest entry level. And for this, you're starting off at 299 pounds. I think that's a reasonable asking price. You're getting a very uh, good product, aluminum casement, uh, rubber straps on them, some great features, 299 for the smaller one, 38 millimeters. Three, uh, 339 pounds with 42 millimeters. You've got various color combinations. This is all that changes here really, is just the different color combinations until you get to the one with the black strap, which has got a space gray aluminum case. So they've done the, the anodizations of the case. This one looks really nice. I like the look of that, very sort of understated look. And then the mid range is the Apple Watch. So nothing other than Apple Watch. And this starts at £479. Stainless steel case, uh, if you want to go up to 42mm stainless steel case, 519 So there are your two prices there. 479 for the smaller one, 519 for the larger one. Again, if I scroll across, and there are 20 different combinations of models here, uh, when you get to something like the Milanese Loop, then you're paying a little bit more. That's this sort of mesh type strap in the middle here. You're paying 559 for the small one, 599 for the larger one. That's my favorite actually. I really do like the look of this particular strap. And then you can go up in the range with leather straps and you can go all the way up to the very top end model. And you've got sort of two different options here. You've got 38 and 42 millimeter across both of them. One of them is just called a link bracelet, which is also stainless steel. That's costing you 819 or 859. And then you've got one with a space black stainless steel link bracelet. So again, an anodized strap to match the anodized casement on the watch. And that's where this mid-range one tops out, £899 or £949. Uh, and, you know, it's a lot of money. You're paying almost £1,000 for that top-end one. Now, of all of these, because I, I shared this with you last night, the one that I would probably like is the link bracelet, but I'm not paying £800 for an Apple Watch. And if I go down to the mid-range here, the one with the Milanese Loop uh, strap, that's probably the most I would personally consider spending. It's going to cost me £599 though for an Apple Watch, and I'm sort of thinking I might change my mind. It's going to be a difficult one because I do like the look of it, but I might just for this first purchase so I can get to see if I'm going to really use it. Because don't forget, I wear a normal watch anyway, so I'm going to have to wear two watches. I'll wear it in place of my fitness tracker. I might go for this one, the 42mm Space Grey at £339. Either that or I might go all the way down to this one with the white strap. Uh, I came out there, didn't I? Do, do, do. Yeah, that's the one I'd probably go for, but in the 42 millimeter size. So that's what I'm probably gonna do. I think I will go with uh, something like that for my initial purchase of the Apple Watch. But watch this space, pardon the pun there. Do stay tuned to the Geek Noise channel. When I get the Apple Watch in, then I will do a proper unboxing of it, and of course, a full review. So let me know in the comment section below what you think of the Apple Watch and that ridiculous pricing on the straps on the uh, edition version. I'm still amazed at that. Give a like to this video. Please do hit that like button. You don't know how much that helps me if you hit that like button. And please also subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.